Well, hi everyone. Welcome back to another edition of Plant Life Project, the channel where we talk all about plants and the projects that they get us into. Hope you all are doing well. Hope you are green side up today, alive and kicking. <clears throat> today we're going to be talking about growing plants, mainly house plants, out of an aquarium. Now, this is a, a hobby that I've gotten into, uh, I guess for the past four years now. Uh, had an aquarium as a kid and, you know, started growing up and lost interest, but it's kind of become a renewed interest for me. And so for the past four years or so, I've been uh, getting back into it. Uh, this is probably, uh, hopefully, <laughs> the last aquarium that I will buy. I've got one in our living room uh, and this one is in my bedroom and it is a 75 gallon aquarium. It's about four feet long and about 18 inches wide. <clears throat> and I wanted to talk about the plants growing in here. Uh, these, most of these are just rather common interior plants, house plants that you can get from anywhere. I mean, you can get them from big box stores, you know, from nurseries, but they're all sold, mostly sold, at, as interior plants. <clears throat> and I'm gonna go over each one with you and just kind of explain how, what its purpose, what its function is in, in this aquarium. Um, the exception to that, all of these are house plants, except for this umbrella sedge. It's a dwarf umbrella sedge. It's uh, supposed to be stay under four feet tall. I have some of this growing in my stock tank pond outside and this has been an experiment growing it inside and I have found that it's done quite well. Uh, these plants are growing under a grow light. This was a light, a grow light that I already owned did not purchase it especially for this but I ordered it from uh, Johnny Seed Company a, a long time ago and um, <clears throat> it's done pretty well it, it's a it's a T5 high output light um, it, you know it, it, it gives just enough light for these plants if I wanted to grow aquatic plants submerged especially I would probably need higher higher a better type of bulb uh, to do that but for this purpose it works just fine <clears throat> um, okay so let's start over here and you probably recognize this plant this is the the old standby uh, pothos and it is it just as common as dirt it's all over everyone's got a, a pothos in their house or um, or will have one at some point but it is an excellent plant for growing out of the water it uh, is, it's tough, it's, it's durable, it's not, it's not one that's easy to kill. It can grow in low light, grow in high light. I've got some of this growing outside. I've got a neon pothos and a uh, marble queen, which is a variegated form. And they both are growing in full sun, full afternoon sun. Uh, so that's what it, that's what it prefers, but it can do very well in low light conditions or medium light conditions. As you can see, it's starting to grow up the wall. I'm thinking about training it to continue up the wall. <laughs> I think it would make a neat background. Um, I'll have to figure out the logistics of that. But uh, yeah, and it, all of these plants are working together as part of the filter system for this aquarium. They are excellent at sucking up just the excess nutrients in the water, nitrates, phosphates, anything that comes from the waste that the fish produce. They are helping to balance out the water just like a natural cycle, just like plants do out in nature. So that's what I'm trying to mimic here in my filtration system is let, let's do this as naturally as possible I do not add chemicals to this, uh, the notable exception being uh, for, for new water when I put it in, a dechlorinator. 
Um, but other than that, I do not add chemicals. Uh, I do fertilize the plants. And I'll explain that in a little bit. But um, anyway, pothos. Okay, on, on the other end, I've got some cuttings of, of pothos that are growing. And they're starting to put out a few new roots, as you can see. And I'm hoping eventually that I can grow this large enough so that it, it covers the whole corner and just provides a really neat cascading effect. Uh, another plant that I have that is often referred to as pothos uh, is also <coughs> is actually a plant called skindapsis, but it's so similar to pothos that it, um, it it's been lumped into that category. But it, this is my first time growing it. I'll see how it does. It's doing pretty well so far. It's, it's put on new growth. I'm I'm happy with it overall. Um, this uh, is another common plant that you may already know what it is, peace lily. And as you can see, it's doing very well. It uh, has bloomed, so it, it must be happy. <laughs> and it's grown, it's grown to a decent size. Now this is a, a variety that is not going to get very big. It uh, there are different different varieties of peace lily. Some are rather large, two feet, three feet tall. This one. It's probably going to max out, which it has, at 18 or so inches. Uh, but it's doing well. I'm happy with it. This arrowhead plant uh, is, in, is sold as an interior house plant. And it has been growing pretty slowly for me. Uh, overall, I like it. And I think it, it adds a lot of interest. It's a, it's a different leaf texture, different leaf shape. But... Um, I'm hoping it will do better as time goes on. I also have a green ribbon Dracaena in the background. And again, this, similar to the arrowhead plant, this, this has, has been growing slowly, but I think it will continue and it will do fine. <clears throat> I'm also trying out Creeping Jenny right here. Uh, this is a plant that is supposed to do well in water and so I'm just testing it out to see how it does growing in, in a substrate, in a planter box substrate as part of, a part of the filter system. And, um, and then this is horsetail. Again, just testing it out. This, the front of this box has been really the plants that I want to experiment with to see if they will grow. I was pretty confident just through experience that the peach lily, the pothos, and the umbrella sedge were going to grow well. But... The rest has been experiment. Some of them have, have died, and that's fine. Um, I think in the long run, I may fill the whole thing up with, uh, with more peace lily and maybe some more umbrella sedge. But let me, let me go over this filter with you. Okay, so I have just a kind of a standard hang on the back filter. Uh, it's meant for a 30 to 60 gallon tank. This is a 75, so it's, it's slightly undersized, but I really am not after the, the filter. I'm really not expecting this filter to, to be, take on the full load of filtering this tank. What, I, what I'm trying to do here, as you can see, I have part of this straddled over this, uh, this box, this planter box. And so I, I'm, this water's flowing in, and then it has an outlet, I've just cut part of the edge off and, and the water flows out. So the water is passing through all of these rocks, the substrate, passing through the plant roots and as it's passing through it's being filtered. And when it comes out it's cleaner than what it was before it, it started. Uh, so this, I, I'm considering this planter box part of my filter system. It's usually called a bog filter because um, it mimics a bog, what a bog would do in a natural setting, marshland area. But uh, I, I, I like the way that it's working. I like the way that the water flows through it. It helps to, to give an extra point of circulation through the tank so that the water is not only circulating on this side, it's also circulating here. Now I do have an additional filter. It is a 
a sponge filter with an air pump attached and it's meant for a, lar a large aquarium up to 100 gallons so that is just supplemental uh, at night a lot of times I will, I will turn off the uh, hang on the back filter because it can it can be kind of noisy sometimes I like the effect of the water flowing but sometimes it's just too noisy so at night this one is is circulating the water and then filtering it out so um, that's my filter system so whenever I do clean out my filters the, the hang on the back filter I I have some sponges inside I'll show you I don't use the standard filter, uh, uh, what do you call it, cartridges that came with it. Instead, I have, I have been using these, uh, these scrub pads, which are a good place to house beneficial bacteria. They have large pores all throughout, and the, the, the water is constantly flowing in there, oxygenated water is flowing. So that allows a very good site for beneficial bacteria. I've also got a section of sponge that is uh, that I cut off. It's high density foam, so it's it's a fine pore foam. Water can still pass through it. Still soaks up water. Still can still uh, be a filter, but it um, it will catch the smaller particles. This is not very good at catching the small particles. It's mainly meant it's mainly meant just for the the beneficial bacteria aspect but this sponge this uh, sponge will catch the smaller particles and help keep the water looking clean and so this is uh, so yeah this this is my flow guard <laughs> my homemade flow guard but it does the trick um, what I usually try to keep this on so that it is uh, keeping the noise level down of the water flowing out. But it's also, get my hand free and I'll try to point to it. Ugh. Sorry, I've never done this one-handed before. It's kind of tricky. Okay, so uh, another thing it does is, is it deflects the water. Let's see if we can get a side view here. Well, it's kind of hard to see, but it's deflecting the water backward to the back of the tank. And so the water, instead of the water pouring out over here, which I already have some pouring out on that end, it's deflected backward and it's flowing downward and circulating toward the, from the back of the tank to the front. And the reason I wanted it to do that was because down, let's see, I've got it. It's hard to see, but down here, here it is. I have a, uh, a shelf in the back that runs the full length of this aquarium, the full four feet. You can see some of it there. And the shelf is made out of uh, a piece of six inch PVC pipe that I cut in half. And I, so I cut it directly in half. It, um, I painted it black so that it would blend in with my background. But I also, I made legs for it, and these are really hard to see, I'm not even gonna try to show you, but I made legs also out of PVC pipe, cut in half, and I, I, had, to, I had to shave down the top of it so that it would fit neatly up around the shelf part of the PVC pipe. But those two legs, uh, are sections of pipe that, that are that are uh, supporting that. So this is actually a good bit of weight once you factor in all the, the substrate, stones, and the water. There's actually a good bit of weight that's pressing down. But so I wanted a substantial shelf that would that would support that weight. And I think I've I've done a pretty good job. And it blends in very well. I'm very pleased with the way it blend has blended in. <clears throat> uh, oh I wanted to talk about the, uh, the driftwood I have in here. Now this driftwood is actually pieces of crepe myrtle. Uh, I, I do I have a landscaping business, so <clears throat> there are often certain times of the year I do crepe myrtle pruning, and uh, I ended up with with a lot of branches that I mostly throw away. But when I find interesting shaped pieces, I try to keep them, let them dry out. Usually it takes about 
you know, several months to a year for them to dry out very well. I let them, let them dry out outside. And, and then I, I kind of save them for projects like this. And so I, this particular, particular branch I decided I wanted to use as driftwood. And I think it does a great job. I think it looks good. And uh, it's, not, it's not harmful for the fish. It doesn't have any, anything harmful in it. It's doing fine. And it's also providing uh, tannins for the water. And I like, if you can see, you can see how dark the water is. Some people think it's dirty, but it's actually, the water is very clean. It's just very dark. It's, it's full of tannins that have leached out from that wood. And, uh, and tannins are, are very healthy, very beneficial for the fish and just for the whole ecosystem. They have, you know, antifungal property. They, uh, humic, the humic acid is, is, what, is what creates the tannins. And uh, the humic acid just provides health benefits by being antifungal, and which helps with fish fish heal when they're injured or when their fins are damaged. Um, but it also there's a whole lot that, that the humic acid will will do in, in an ecosystem. And I don't know I don't even know the entirety of the benefits, but uh, just from what I've learned so far, it is a good thing to have tannins in the water. And uh, it helps. It also helps to to feed and nurture the uh, the uh, beneficial bacteria, which are very essential because they filter the water and break down waste. Uh, okay, so now I want to talk about. I know I haven't talked about the fish yet, but that's not really. <laughs> I'll get to that in a minute. I mainly wanted to cover the plants, but uh, also in the filter system. But I also want to talk about. Uh, my aquarium stand. Now, I did not want to go buy a you know two hundred dollar aquarium stand uh, from the big box stores, and I didn't want to go through the hassle of building one because I'm just not the best carpenter in the world. So I decided I'll just use cinder blocks. I'll get some you know some planks of wood, obviously, to 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 make a top for the for the table, basically. But anyway, cinder blocks work work great. They're cheap easy to set up and uh, and and to prevent them from damaging the carpet I cut out a piece of wood piece of plywood that, that was the same shape as the cinder block and put it down so these these uh, cinder blocks are not sitting directly on the carpet so the carpet's not being damaged <clears throat> so uh, yeah and then uh, one problem I ran into was my grow light was sitting too low over over the tank I, I know I needed I needed more height it was probably sitting about this high uh, and so I knew I needed more room for the plants because I wanted I wanted just the effect of plants growing out of the water just lush gorgeous plants so um, so anyway I built these what do you call them a lift <laughs> built a lift for my grow light uh, just out of two by fours, nothing, nothing fancy, just uh, basic, and it, it does a great job. It um, provides that that extra height that I need, and at some point, I think I'd like to paint them maybe black, just to to give it a cleaner look, or I could stain them just with a wood stain. But um, anyway, it does the job. I think it looks decent for right now, and uh, yeah, so that's that's my tank. Okay, we'll talk about the fish. Might as well. It's a fish tank, right? Let's talk about the fish. Even though this channel is supposed to be about plants, let's talk about the fish. Okay, so these are fish are just nothing, nothing out of the ordinary. Uh, just some some guppies um, and a few platies in there as well. Uh, but I guess I guess I'll add a little story in here to finish up. So the guppies, I started. What year was it? 2018, I think. 2017. Anyway, one of those years, I bought what five guppies, one one male and several females, and you know they started to reproduce and they kept reproducing. And basically, it was a lesson in um, uh, what's the word? <laughs> oh gosh, forgot the word. Anyway, it was a lesson in how. Uh, numbers expand over time Ex exponential growth that's the words I'm looking for exponential growth it was a lesson in exponential growth 
it was, it's just amazing how quickly these fish can produce offspring continuously, month after month, and then their offspring after them, and so forth and so on. So it's really been fascinating. And um, these are actually all, well, mostly females uh, and, and just small fry. Um, there are some males that I see have, have, grown, have developed that I, I will need to take out. And I have a separate tank that I keep the males. So I'm trying to keep them separated as much as possible just to limit the reproduction because it just gets ridiculous. I've already got a stock tank outside that all of my overflow fish are going into. So anyway, so that's, you know, that's pretty much it about, about this fish tank. It's been great having it in my room. Uh, just gives me a, a little extra level of relaxation and uh, just a little slice of, of nature right here in my bedroom so yeah thank you guys for watching uh, if you like this content please uh, hit the like button please subscribe to my channel where we talk about plants and projects associated with them uh, anyway thank you guys for joining and I always forget what I'm supposed to say oh yeah <laughs> remember it's all about the plants